Hello, I'm Rachel Jones for the Finance News Network. Joining me from Acorn Capital Investment Fund is Portfolio Manager Robert Bruce. Robert, welcome back to FNN. Thanks, Rachel. Pleasure to be here. Now, a lot is happening in the world right now, and there are so many unknowns as we exit 2020. As an investment manager, how do you rank and balance investment opportunities in light of the uncertainty that we are operating in right now? Well, Rachel, Acorn Capital has an experienced investment team of 10 specialists looking across the whole industry spectrum and not just the usual suspects in IT and fintech. Through our bottomed up research, we believe that we're uncovering companies that are undervalued. And so, yes, there is a value element to our investing, but it's not your traditional price to book multiples where they're cheap for a reason because the industry's sunset or the return on capital is really low. Rather, we're considering factors like the, the size and the growth of the addressable market, the potential market share and the competitive nature of all influence the profit structure and the ability to generate operating leverage and very importantly future operating cash flow. Uh, the other really important aspect in, in measuring emerging companies is considering the qualitative factors in our ranking. The younger the company, the more important these qualitative factors are, such as competitive advantage, management quality, and the ability to execute on a go-to-market strategy. And congratulations on the Clean Space IPO. What a fantastic outcome for the company and for ACQ investors. Can you discuss what attracted to Acorn Clean Space originally and how involved Acorn was in the business from the time of investment to the listing date? We discovered Clean Space back in 2015 at a $15 million valuation. We're attracted to the innovative product development and patented products uh, and the system technology they had developed. The team was experienced and the founders and lead engineers were formerly of ResMed and they'd spent several years developing the product and launching in the market, which reduced several risks associated with early stage companies that we saw. The business model was attractive with firstly a product with significant IP and previous investment, enabling it to generate strong margins and return. And then secondly, the razor blade business model where customers purchase the initial respirator, but are then required to continue to purchase filters and other accessories, leading to attractive recurring annuity revenue. The addressable market for this company was large and it was global and they had an existing European regulatory approval and were moving into the North American market. ACQ's initial investment provided the additional capital needed to complete the NIOSH approval in the USA and working capital to expand its global distribution. The incumbent market players were established, but they were resting on their laurels in our view and not innovating the products that had been in market for over 20 years. We've continued to support the business through its growth journey, meeting regularly with management and the board and providing additional growth capital when required. Clean Space is really now benefiting from strong demand and protection of frontline healthcare workers that is really a company making event in our view. It had a strong IPO last week, valuing it at $340 million and rising strongly. So clearly the market also sees some similar positive attribu attributes in clean space. And what are the attributes and risks investors should consider when looking at an investment in ACQ? ACQ invests in microcaps, which by their nature are growth companies and are typically uh, opening new markets, disrupting incumbents, and can be capital hungry. These are the companies that we believe will be significant contributors to the future growth of the Australian economy. Uh, we, we believe that investors should consider ACQ as part of their broader portfolio investment structure, being 5 to 10% of the allocated amount, uh, such as the alternative investments. Emerging companies can be volatile, and to manage that risk for investors, we've selected a portfolio based uh, on the ranking from our industry industry portfolio managers who have all focused on their sectors for a number of years. We typically invest in 70 to 80 companies, which allows both high conviction with the top 10 typically being 30 to 35% of the portfolio, but also importantly, allowing a tail of emerging companies where we can monitor and increase our holding as they develop and pass key milestones and de-risk. Pre-tax NTA is $1.47 per share and has delivered 16% return in the last year. The board has a policy of paying out 5% of post-tax NTA every year. And with $23 million in dividend reserves or 34 cents per share, uh, the reliability of the dividend stream is well supported. Robert Bruce, congratulations on the performance and thanks so much for the update. Thanks for your time, Rachel.